Good afternoon. Welcome to LiveWire. I'm Clark Curtis, Director of Communications with the College of Computing and Informatics. My guest today is Rick Hudson, Senior Project Manager with the Data Science Initiative. Welcome, Rick. Thank you, Clark. Um, a little background first before we talk about the data repository. Just for those who may not know, a little information about the Data Science Initiative itself. Well, the Data Science Initiative is a multidisciplinary activity uh, across the university space. It's about uh, a year and a half old. Uh, it started out with <clears throat> a couple of uh, professional science master's programs in uh, data science and business analytics and health informatics and has since gone beyond those to include outreach to outside clients, uh, executive education uh, projects, both here on the campus and with external and right now, it includes really activities across all of the seven colleges uh, having commenced in CCI and really a collaborative effort between the College of Computing and Informatics, the Business College, and Health and Human Services. And so sort of from that core group, it is branching out to uh, include uh, energy and engineering, uh, liberal arts and sciences, architecture, education, and really all of the constituent elements because you know, big data, one of the buzzwords today, affects really uh, every facet of professional business activities, our lives, and so forth. Explain a little bit your role as the senior project manager with the, with the initiative. Well, my role is to, as, as projects, as activities uh, get started and get underway, either internally to the university or between the university and an external partner, is to really sort of oversee those and maintain levels, maintain uh, channels of communication among all the participants and sort of projectize those in a way that uh, there's a level of understanding, all expectations are firmly vetted and understood. Uh, various uh, conventional project management elements are, are included, such as milestones, uh, delivery dates, deliverables, understandings, and so forth. And we do, and the staff is growing as we speak. I mean, Mark Armstrong is what, what industry? He's the university industry, industry coordinator. Coordinator, and then Shannon Schluter is the data, the, scientist. the data scientist. So explain a little bit about their roles as well. Well, Mark's role is to reach out and make and facilitate connections between the university and outside clients in, in business and government and so forth, outside the boundaries of the university. And then at that point that those relationships are established and we start uh, creating specific, specific activities and they become projects and efforts, then uh, it becomes my role to sort of connect and coordinate. Shannon's role as the data scientist is to be that, that analytic and visualization expert that can be uh, sort of the, the internal expert for the data science initiative, reaching out, working with clients, especially as they work with our tools and our capabilities here in the, in the DSI. And I would be remiss, I should have mentioned Mursad Hadzakadek, he my former boss, but now mm -hmm. he's the director of DSI yeah, as well. Mursad is the cross-university director for the initiative. Well, we wanted to talk about the data repository because I know it's, it's relatively new and it's mm -hmm. evolving rapidly, and I know you wanted to talk about that some. Uh, first, it's called SOFI, mm -hmm. so let them know what SOFI <laughs> stands for. SOFI is a system for the observation of populous heterogeneous information. What does all that mean? All that means is it is a data, a repository, it's a holding place, a bucket for any and uh, <clears throat> all kinds of data. So uh, structured data, unstructured data, streaming data, bulk data, uh, and by going into the structured, unstructured, be it uh, you know, classical ordered data like you would see in a spreadsheet or a, or a relational database to uh, documents, periodicals, photographs, audio, video, anything that, anything that is digitized. And how does it get populated? Uh, <clears throat> we have an ingest capability, an ingest function, which uh, let me put a kind of a, a note on Sophie. Sophie reached what we uh, tagged as its initial operational capability in May, which it, it actually uh, was our first project. And we took it from sort of conception in uh, May, June of last year to initial capability in May of this year. So over a year's time, we went out and uh, spec'd it, designed it, bought it, and put the first iteration of it, say, online in May. We're aiming for uh, 
full capability in December. And full capability means there's an additional set of requirements that we have identified for it to possess that we'll reach in the December timeframe. But it is a complete data repository observatory, meaning that it has an ingest capability that people can provide and place data in a virtual environment. And then it gets populated into SOFI and then is able, uh, capable of being accessed by tools and users. Talk about the security aspects of dealing with all, I know that you've got mm -hmm. things in place to deal with that, but explain how all that works in terms of you getting all this stuff and the security issues. Well, that was one of the first areas we looked at was governance because we knew that uh, as a university, we had all kinds of data here with all kinds of confidentiality and proprietary and, uh, and other issues associated with it from from healthcare information that might fall under HIPAA to education and student information that might fall under FERPA and so forth. And then in dealing with external clients, they would have proprietary and other uh, information that they considered sensitive. And so our first effort was to design the governance structure that sat over SOFI or within SOFI and would, de would determine uh, who could see what specific uh, element of data and whether they could discover it, even though it was there and who might have access to it to either view it or access it or change it. And so that was one of the first areas to go in. So we had a fairly uh, rigid and rigorous mechanism in place to safeguard access to data. So that was one of our key points. Um, how do you make or can you determine or make sure that the data you're getting mm -hmm. is clean? Is there a way to make sure that everything is accurate and or uh, no, that's, you know, when you talk about big data, everybody likes Vs, volume, yeah. velocity, veracity, validity, um, and then, then you can go up to six, I think, Vs. But that's one of the things we, it, and it's one of the concerns you have to take when you're doing data. Is it clean data or is it accurate data? I mean, we, we can bring the data in and house it and uh, you know, look at it for certain malicious content, maybe viruses and so forth, which which is a research element in itself, or you know, the looking for uh, malicious elements within data. So that uh, cleaning is, uh, is a valid area, and cleaning means different things to different sure. people depending on their research. Let's get into how it's being used, because I know in our discussions, it's basically it's starting off within the university community, and there's a lot of stuff going mm -hmm. on, so I'll just turn it over to you to kind of explain how this is working. Well, we are, in the first place, having set up SOFI, we're interested in going around the university and identifying uh, dispersed data sets that we might bring into, into SOFI and house in SOFI that then researchers could access through, through the SOFI uh, mechanism that we then have the data in one place. Other areas we're looking at, we're particularly interested in social media. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, we just concluded an agreement with Twitter that gives us uh, access to the Twitter historical API for specific research purposes so that uh, UNC Charlotte researchers or researchers affiliated with UNC Charlotte can then come to us, and this is where one of Shannon's major roles is as data scientist, can come to us and one of the values that we will provide is to help them set up queries or filter sets based on their specific research to look at keywords, key terms, phrases, phrases in context and so forth and build those into something that goes against that Twitter API and then we bring in uh, content and store it in SOFI for say that research element effort and then the tools would be to, uh, applied against that to do analytics. And by virtue of our agreement, uh, you know, there's a 1% Twitter feed that is typically used, and it's good to check out the mechanisms of, say, how you handle data, but in the strictest sense, it's not statistically uh, relevant. However, this uh, data set that we have access to through the API is fairly rich, and we have access, I think, um, by virtue of the subscription that we have, is 130, no, 13 million tweets a month, and we can go back to uh, 200 days in the historical archive. Now, isn't one of the professors in SIS, he's, you were telling me, has a, has a grant or something in street slang and... Uh, yes, there's a prof professor, Dr. Yonggi, who is doing an NIH, I believe, funded study on substance abuse and as reflected in social media. And he's our, kind of our kickoff study. 
uh, and we are in the process of developing a filter set which includes street slang, drug names for, for substances that we are putting against that Twitter stream to bring in relevant data for his study. And again, some of the other areas, as you said, it, it started with the core group of College of Computing and Informatics, Bell mm -hmm. College of Business and Health and Human Services, but it's spreading, the wings are spreading, and mm -hmm. I know there's some other projects Yes, we, we've got a particularly uh, dynamic relationship with Project Mosaic, which is the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. It's, the, it's headed up by Dr. Jean-Claude Thiel in geography, and the, you know, their mission statement is to integrate analytics into that space over in liberal arts and sciences. And so we are working with them now to put together a proposal which uh, is to be directed at human trafficking and social media looks to be playing a big role in that, and that is something we're putting together uh, for submission in the fall. And how do, you had mentioned like engineering and those types of things. How do, how do you see them utilizing this tool? Uh, engineering, particularly in the area of energy analytics. Uh, so not only, you know, we, we talked about social media, and that's a role player there, uh, but you know, we can look at any kind of data, quantitative data, uh, textual data, photographs, so forth. So uh, anything that reflects activity in the, in the technical realm or the human realm and in, in engineering, particularly in energy, uh, there was just a, a local conference, I think in Mooresville, that dealt with uh, rail issues. And we, we're, in the con we're in, in the, right now talking to NCDOT Rail Division, and they're interested in how we might apply our analytic capabilities to you know, analysis of rail transport and energy and consumption in rail transport and uh, the rail infrastructure, the life of the infrastructure and you know, registering and uh, monitoring the health of the infrastructure and repairs and so forth. So that's an area that engineering is, and that EPIC is heavily involved in. And we see it going into you know, education issues uh, and specifically health and human services issues. Uh, social media, for one, has been used in the past to to track the spread of infectious diseases. So we see that continuing on there with the bioinformatics and areas like that. When you talk to people outside the, the DSI realm, do you find them surprised that, oh, this could help me too in terms of, because I know when we first started this, we mm -hmm. thought it was just kind of confined and now we're finding out that anybody and everybody can probably take advantage of it. It is, as we connect the dots, you know, people come up with their own types of things. I mean. Uh, uh, there's a particular, you look at architecture, uh, monitoring the, the movements and flows of people and uh, some, of the, uh, some of the means that they have developed to monitor traffic flow and human flow through spaces, say, might be transferred into the health services realm to monitor the movement of people, say, in hospitals and clinics to just see where, where people are going or perhaps to verify that people are following uh, desired health protocols in, in treating certain cases and certain situations. So uh, we're seeing a lot of areas, there's, there's overlap in a lot of areas, and particularly as this other term, you see, you know, you have the big data term and the data science term. <clears throat> and the other term you'll hear about is the Internet of Things. And really data, the big data, is a continuum that comes, that goes from the, the mass analytics on one end to the Internet of Things on the other end as these sensors proliferate out there measuring uh, every part of people's lives and activities and collecting that information and feeding it up to somewhere where it must be stored i.e. Sophie and analyzed the tools that Sophie, you know Sophie's not just data sets but it's also a suite of tools analytic tools and visualization tools to put against data to to extract uh, insights and meaning. And talk a little bit, I was just thinking with, with Shannon Schluter's role that we were talking about as a data scientist, how does this collaborative effort work? You have people that need the information, we've got people that know how to dissect mm -hmm. analytics. How does that marriage come together? Well, the people who need the information, if, you, if I take the human trafficking uh, example, the people who will be doing the research are social scientists, they're criminal justice people, they're uh, psychologists, sociologists, maybe over in the economic realm, ec economists and so forth, they'll be looking at the various experts. They're the subject matter experts or the domain experts. They will depend on the analytic experts to be able to bring the various types of data in, house it, and then assist them in extracting meaning from it. In, 
and identifying the tools that need to be put against it to extract real meaning to, to make decisions then within their domains. And I think I know the answer, but I'll ask anyway. Just the reasoning starting just at the university level mm -hmm. initially. The reasoning for, yeah. uh, for the data science initiative? Well, no, data? just the SOFI and your target right now is just folks on campus. Well, we want to, you know, SOFI is a tool, and by itself, uh, its, its use is fairly limited. Its, its optimum use will come about as it becomes of value to these various domain areas. And we have a lot of expertise on campus, and the more that we can connect the dots on campus and uh, get people aware of SOFI and its capabilities, then they can bring their own needs and their capabilities to it, which will cause uh, the, the capabilities of that system to grow as we learn more about the needs and the tools and the expertise out in the domain areas. So it will cause a SOFI's value to grow exponentially as we expose it to more and more disciplines and bring those capabilities, those interest areas, those focuses, those challenges into it. So as it has a, a meaning and a value on its own as an, as an analytic tool and developing uh, new and better and more innovative analytic tools, but it has a you know, whole order of magnitude, more va other value in how it interacts with those domains in, in psychology, sociology, criminal justice, economics, business, marketing, uh, health informatics, energy, you know, architectural space design, things like that, <clears throat> and how it can enhance and accelerate uh, those areas. Talk some about the, the collaborative effort with NC State RENCI and what, what that project is and how mm -hmm. SOFIE would play a part in that as well. Well, that effort is based on a research opportunities initiative that was uh, kicked off early in the year based on a grant that we got from the UNC General Administration through the state legislature. And it was to look at uh, data-driven risk mitigation research. So, and it was a joint effort between, led by UNC Charlotte, but jointly between UNC Charlotte, uh, the Renaissance Computing Institute in Chapel Hill, and NC State. And uh, the effort of that was to build a three institution infrastructure that connected those three institutions uh, in real time and where we could share the data handling and uh, analytic capabilities of the three institutions in a transparent manner. Uh, the, the, the anchor of our element of that is SOFI. And so, and it sort of accelerated the development of SOFI because uh, one of SOFI's key um, elements is the ability to federate with other data sets, either here on campus or off campus. And this sort of accelerated that to where we needed the ability to connect to and federate, in a sense, with RENC and NC State. So we have already accomplished that. We have a the three institution infrastructure is set up to where a researcher, say here at UNC Charlotte, can access uh, resources at RENC or at NC State, effectively in a transparent manner, and work with them. Uh, we did set out a call for proposals based on that data-driven risk mitigation topic, and we received uh, 14 proposals, and they are now in the evaluation phase, and selectees should be notified around mid-July, and then they will be proposals. Uh, the, research, the research under those proposals will be carried out under the next, really over the next two years, using that infrastructure and growing that infrastructure. What is this allowing folks to do now that they weren't able to do before? Well, it allows uh, first access to a much richer and diverse suite of information, of data, that they could fuse together and cross-reference and cross-correlate and look at a wider area. And it also enables access to a wider suite, of, a much richer suite of tools that can be put against that data from one point. Uh, in the past, the data sets might be you know, spread across different areas and you had to satisfy different governance uh, routines to gain access to it and so and so forth. But now uh, in, in the SOFI environment, you could sit down in one place before you know, a single portal and then look at a data catalog, access data that you would have the ability to, to, to access, apply tools against it, <clears throat> look at the, the generated or derived data and then uh, go through an iterative process and an analysis really without leaving your seat. 
Is a repository like this, is it unique? I mean, have we got something unique going mm -hmm. right here in Charlotte? Well, we have unique elements of it. It's not unique in itself. There, you know, there are lots of research institutions that are developing repositories around the country. There are com private companies that are doing it. Uh, there are you know, the government entities that are very interested in it and doing it. It is unique in that uh, we are being very aggressive at making it a multidisciplinary, uh, you know, multi-collegiate type of activity. We're very actively reaching out to the, the players in the various domains, as well as you know, off campus in the, in the commercial clientele area. So uh, we're unique in that uh, we, you know, we realize the value of SOFI and what it can do the wider we cast the net. And uh, so we're unique in some of the ways we're going against things like social media. And I think that uh, you know, we're breaking ground into the, the area with Twitter and we're looking at other areas, working at other data sets. So as we bring these data sets together and these capabilities under one umbrella, I think the researchers will find that we're trying to take some of the burden of managing, curating, uh, keeping the data off of them so they can do the pure research, that they can go and then the analytics is right there at their doorstep. The visualization methodologies are right there at their doorstep to where they can go in and just start producing and have this access to a wide population and diversity of data sets. Where do you see all this going? Well, uh, it, it's, you know, the, the sky is the limit. Uh, we're when you throw in the analytic capabilities, the access to the wide area of data, the, the promise of the Internet of Things, uh, you know, the amount of information that we're going to have access to is going to be growing you know, daily. You know, one statistic says that 90% uh, <clears throat> of all the data in the world has been created in the last two years. So if you go back you know, from Hammurabi's code <laughs> to two years ago and then two more years, you know, 90 percent of content is relatively new and that's only going to keep going as the number of the number of internet users proliferate, you know, the number of uh, data generators proliferate. You know, one term that's been used is we are all creating digital exhaust and that exhaust has value and that value begins to be realized as we can put that stuff together in places where it can be accessed and analyzed for for the good of society, for the good of, uh, you know, it's, it then becomes a gold mine of information for people who are studying diseases, for people in the retail environment who want to maximize the exposure of, and the positive exposure of their products, for people who are looking to fill human needs, uh, for people who are looking at uh, tracking diseases and so forth. You know, one of the, one of the classic examples is the CDC used to know about the outbreak of flus and, and you know, epidemics, and at best they were two weeks behind the curve. But when they got into uh, doing analysis on social media queries and other things like that, they suddenly became real time. And as we go um, a broader scope geog geographically across the world, we're, we are ahead of real time in certain areas. And then as you know, when these, when these epidemics, for example, start coming in some areas, you know the travel patterns of people and the transportation nets that are available, you can predict even before they hit in certain areas and start taking, uh, start taking measures to, to accommodate that. And I think you pretty much answered it, but I mean, do you see this, this tool that we've got here with a global impact? I mean, people will be accessing data from everywhere. They will be. I mean, people will be sitting here and accessing data in Africa. They already are. And researchers, we may, we will be affiliating with researchers all over the world who can come from where you can, you know, virtually from wherever they are, come into SOFI. Because one of the, uh, in any data repository, but one of the things that the technology enables us to do, and what has really enabled the big data revolution, is to spread out the analytics so that uh, we can address things in parallel where we used to address them in serial and that you can carry out analytics that used to take you know, days, weeks, months, can be done in much shorter amounts of time. So we can take the analytics to the data, so no matter where you are, as you're coming in, you can get your insights in a fairly reasonable amount of time. The other thing I was thinking too is, we obviously have the people that know the analytics, how to dissect it, how to mm -hmm. figure all that information out, but will this repository, may they be finding some things out in there that's gonna help 
them as well with their research or other, you know, when they reach out to other oh, folks? They will. You know, the, the data analytics and the data handling, it's one of the value-added services that the CCI element of the DSI can provide to others. But as they do that, we're going to find out how to handle larger quantities of data uh, quicker and faster and more efficiently. We're going to be able to analyze uh, data in different ways and in, in, in uh, innovative ways to extract new insights. I mean, that's one of the areas. Data, in a sense, never grows old because we will come up with new ways to analyze data that might have been collected 25 years ago. So, and that's one of the challenges because as as we collect data and the, ba the way we gather it changes and its format changes and grows and, and something like that, what a data set that reflects uh, some condition right now, but you want to go back and see how that condition's changed, that data's changed over the 20 years. So we're going to, be, we're going to find new ways to look at not old data, but data of a certain vintage uh, and find new ways to extract new meaning from that that might lead to new insights to things that we our understanding from 20 and more years back. Sure. Well, Rick, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. This is exciting, fascinating, and to think it's happening right here in our own backyard is great. Thank you very much. All right. Rick Hudson, Senior Project Manager with the Data Science Initiative. And just a quick pointer, if uh, you want more information on it, uh, you can go to dsi.uncc.edu, and it has a complete listing of all the things that we were talking about here today.